Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the quarterfinals of the 2015 season here. And we have a match for you today between, on the blue side, Microsoft One. Microsoft, of course, makes uh, the lovely OS I'm running to bring this coverage to you guys. Fantastic uh, company there playing for the charity known as Charity Water. Charity Water uh, works to build clean water infrastructure in parts of the world uh, that don't have easy access to clean water. Uh, building wells, building filtration systems, make sure that people can have water and uh, actually be productive. You know, I always uh, say this when talking about this charity, but as gamers, <clears throat> I think we can all appreciate uh, the benefits of having uh, efficiency in the process. And if you have to walk for miles and miles to a local pond or uh, local stream just to get enough water to start your day off that's so many hours of your life spent simply in transit every day uh, and it's just not efficient if we could just find a way to localize those uh, water sources uh, and many opportunities we have the opportunity to do so we have the resources to do so there are wells nearby that just haven't been made so charity water looks to optimize those uh, parts of the world and bring local water access to those communities so fantastic charity there. And they are playing against, on the red side, Facebook, a feed story. Facebook, of course, the iconic social media site. They are playing for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, that is a charity that sends doctors to the war-torn regions of the world and uh, developing countries that are facing diseases that they don't have the infrastructure to handle. Just a, a any doctor who participates with Doctors Without Borders is, in my book, one of the most courageous people uh, in our modern era. Uh, to actually put yourself on the line uh, to just altruistically try and help people regardless of what the conflict they're involved in, what sort of disease they've caught on, whether there's a possible epidemic about to break out, to go to those places where those people really need you, even though it puts yourself at danger, just a fantastic group of people, and I'm so glad there's a charity out there enabling those people to make sure that they can do the very important work that they do. Without any further ado, let's get into the pick ban phase here. For both of these teams, we see, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the bands coming out for the blue side are Ari, Shivana, and Zyra. Of course, uh, Ari and Zyra uh, picks that. Uh, this uh, team on the red side, Facebook feed story, is very familiar with, of course. Uh, do not expect those bands to be going anywhere uh, any further on. Shivana is a bit less uh, standard of a band, I would think, against this team. Uh, certainly not that uh, Shivana has never been broke out uh, time and again uh, in this top lane here. Um... But, you know, it, it's just I feel like there could have been some stronger bands in that area. So that's the uh, first first game band that they're going with, sort of the flex area, is that Shivana band. And again, I, their scouting might have bur uh, bore different results than mine, but I feel like that's if we're going to see any changes after game one, it's probably going to be that Shivana band being changed up a little bit to give a little bit of flexibility for this Microsoft One team and reacting to how they see this first game go here. Uh, and looking over to the red side of the bands, uh, we see Gragas, Callista, and Bard, of course. Three champions that are very familiar to the Microsoft One team. Bard, uh, we rarely see Bards banned out or uh, even picked nowadays. So when you see a Bard banned uh, as a target ban, you know that there's a lot of respect paid to the support on the other team. Uh, very familiar with that champion. Um, and has a lot of mechanical proficiency with that very unique uh, uh, kit that uh, Bard provides. So uh, very uh, disappointed I am to see that Bard being banned out because, of course, I love seeing the champion diversity. I love casting games where we have unusual picks, but, uh, you know, I certainly understand why that Bard is banned out. <laughs> There's a reason it would have been fun to cast in this game, so... Uh, you know, hopefully, I, I hope inside at some point in this series, Bard won't be banned and we will see that champion picked up. But uh, in the meantime, let's look uh, for now at the compositions for these teams in this game here. Of course, we're going to see that Hecarim coming out. Unfortunately, that Sivir was picked up. 
Uh, so no speed boost able to come out for that Hecarim to enable his passive to get him a little extra damage, a little bit uh, thicker into the fight there. Um, but we do see uh, that Ziggs coming out, and he does opt to go with the cleanse right here. Uh, very uh, much respect paid uh, to that um, Sejuani who's going to be coming out with that ultimate. Um, but also, of course, that Karma going to be coming out in the mid lane. Her ability to uh, root that Ziggs is something that definitely does need to be respected as well. Uh, Karma has so much uh, potential damage output <laughs> if you give her the opportunity to. You've got to be very highly mobile when uh, engaging with her. So bringing that cleanse, possibly Ghost could have been another option as well. But bringing that cleanse, probably a bit more respectful of a summoner spell there. And definitely a good choice uh, overall Karma again. Not somebody uh, that Sour Spinach is uh, rusty with. I expect to see uh, Karma uh, able to be whipped out uh, in these preceding games as well. Uh, depending on how it goes and depending, of course, on what type of uh, composition they're going, uh, they're going to look for here. But certainly not somebody I don't expect to see ever again. I, I would be... Uh, very unsurprised to see this Karma hanging out here, which uh, would, should create for some interesting uh, team fights as well, uh, depending on what type of uh, ability she decides to use for those team fights. She can, of course, be a CG and poker. She can be uh, a more uh, engage focused person, uh, using that speed up to get herself in range to root some people to start off the fight. Uh, she can focus on giving her team a lot of shields so when they go in they have a bit more survivability of course with that sivir as well giving that shield to people uh, is going to be super helpful because they're going to be diving right in good uh, ziggs q there uh, unfortunately they're not able to clear out that ward a bit of a mistake there uh, not able to clear out the opposing ward either and Janna so low right now uh, she does it does require her to get her uh, that low the ignite coming out from that uh, Morgana, you see the double wards coming out again, unfortunately, there. Um, but that will earn them the flash from Janna, so. Ignite, perhaps. Uh, a little less critical here in the early stages than flash, so. Overall, a definite net gain here uh, for the blue side. So, you see, Proc and that spell thieves mercilessly. With that Q onto Sour Spinach. And of course, uh, Karma opting not to go back here. You're gonna have a, that damage is not going to be insignificant here in this lane. Ziggs, of course, so focused on poking out his opponents, is going to be very content uh, to have a little extra help in that initial stage, even if it's just a few hit points here or there. As we see, the lane swap does come in after that hectic start here. Ziggs already uh, capitalizing on uh, that damage on the Karma here, harassing with those empowered auto attacks. Uh, but we do see again, uh, this lane swap doesn't, did work out here uh, for this red side. And you know, it looks like Imne is actually opting to uh, shove this wave in here. He's doing a little bit of that AoE damage with that Q. Um, gonna be helping out with the freeze on himself, unfortunately, there. He's been quite being denied farm just yet, but he's taking so much poke. Now he's going to be absolutely zoned out in that top lane, so... We'll see how that develops here, because Trundle uh, is in the bottom lane as well. Uh, the wave is shoved into him. There's some beautiful chain CC, but unfortunately, under the turret, and Jinx takes two turret shots, three turret shots! Jinx gets executed, fails to drop the turret aggro. Oh no, a disaster in the bottom lane. I mean, fortunately, no aggro was brought from Trundle, uh, so that's just an execution, but oh my goodness gracious, not the start you want to see if you're Microsoft One. That beautiful chain CC from the Morgana Q into the Jinx Chompers didn't work out there. Uh, and that aggro has failed to be dropped the um, first couple shots from the turret uh, taking Jinx so low already and then just failing to drop the aggro just a, a horrible mistake there I 
Uh, that's so disappointing to see. Like, that's... I mean, you know, I personally am not really, like... <laughs> oh, I'm so disappointed, but... I mean, that's got to get into the mentality uh, of this Jinx in the bottom lane to have just uh, gone back and just bought a longsword. Like, that's... That's got to hurt your mentality. Now you're at a level disadvantage against uh, the person you should have been able to easily zone off this turret here. Uh, and freeze that lane out. I mean, this is... It's got to be devastating. This is going to be a true test of their mental fortitude here in the bottom lane. Jinx, very good use of the chompers there, despite being slowed. Still able to uh, give a favorable, a very favorable exchange in that bottom lane. As, of course, Morgana roaming towards that mid lane, trying to give Z Ziggs a little extra help in uh, crushing that karma, if possible. Um, you see a massive CS lead already. A 10 CS lead at uh, four and a half minutes in favor of that Ziggs. Absolutely able to poke that Karma out of lane very quickly here. Um, so that's definitely going to be helpful. As we see another a nice wave of uh, minions crashing into the turret, denying that experience in CS from Karma. He's taking another turret shot there. It does have a lot of damage going on that Trundle, though. Trundle definitely needs to think about going B right now. He's uh, got that Morgana returning to lane right now as well, so he's got to be very respectful of the immense range those Morgana Qs do have. See how far he's staying back right now. Morgana actually going to be able to get him. She does! There it is! That's Morgana going to be picking up the solo kill with the first blood from the Ignite. On to that Trundle. So in the end, First Blood does go over to the Microsoft One team here. So you see a lot of good zoning in that top lane here. There's uh, the Chompers a little bit forward placed here, perhaps a little bit more fearful. Uh, of Sejuani following that up with Trundle uh, so perhaps allowing a disengage there intentionally as a bit more defensive of a play there but Rek'Sai gonna come in gonna actually force the flash out of Sejuani here there's a harassment there from Silent J on that Morgana gonna make sure that Rek'Sai is nice and safe doing some counter jungling Actually, do we need to keep our eyes peeled onto that uh, Sejuani and Trundle? They're going to be catching that Rek'Sai deep in enemy territory right now. Rek'Sai, great juke there. Uh, I'm not sure what else she can make of it though. She does have Flash available. We should be able to flash that wall. The Ziggs ultimate not landing and Sejuani caught out by the Q. And that's going to be another kill. Oh, all calculated, all planned. And beautiful drops there, the Chompers landing on the two, another kill on the Jinx, and oh my god, Jinx, all of a sudden, getting kickstarted right into this game. That's going to be an early dragon for the blue side here. Next side, very low, but unfortunately, no way to contest that with all those there. All they're going to be able to do is try and raid that dragon for a turret in the top of the game. So, should be able to do just fine here. Uh, as we do see that first turret of the game uh, going over to the red side. Now, even up that turret score. Right now, almost 2k gold lead in favor of this blue side. Oh my gosh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold. I, I was just looking at other parts of the map and analyzing the items that were built right now. Hold that thought. We gotta watch from the Jinx cam here. Seeing that Trundle, she does have the ward uh, coverage here to see how low this Trundle is. Just see that Jinx looking right now. Not even autoing, just looking, waiting, looking right up here. Here comes the rocket. Boom! 
It doesn't get it. 16 HP prevents the steal from the blue buff as well. But now Jinx getting those three kills absolutely shoved in the late game right now. Hyper Carry Jinx begins here at the eight minute mark. So much damage on a sour spinach just from that uh, single Q from Ziggs along with the uh, assistance there from the Morgana. Who catches her out again? This could be the kill, and it will be with the flash forward for the last auto attack to secure it. Ziggs picks up a kill there. 5 0 oh in kills right now. Very impressive start here. Certainly not one without errors, but a very impressive start here from this Microsoft One team. Sending a message in game one with this absolute domination. I mean, the only thing that uh, this uh, Facebook team has been able to get here is a single turret in that top lane, and that was essentially traded for a dragon. Uh, really, not even traded, just sort of picked up as a consolation prize afterwards. There's the ultimate coming out from Sejuani. Very aggressive here. Does not want to let that Ziggs get out of control, but unfortunately, uh, with no follow-up damage, not going to be able to get that done on her own. You see Trundle trying his best to defend that top lane turret here. Not really quite able to do so. Top lane taking a lot of damage here. Trying to poke him out every now and again. Lower that HP just bit by bit here. There goes the ultimate all in from Hecarim. Is it going to be enough? They're actually the kill going over to Karma and that last turret shot actually going to give the return kill to Karma. Excuse me, the kill on uh, Trundle going over to Morgana. But the turret uh, going to be the hero of the day for this red side, getting them on the board with their first kill. Teleport coming in here. There's Trundle. Beautiful satchel charge from Ziggs though. Gonna actually force the ult right on top of himself because he will be going down. Nothing to be done about that. And actually exhausted now is Jinx. That's gonna force the flash out. A lot of damage coming around. Good positioning on the boomerang to make sure both procs hit her. And stepping very far forward is Jinx. Getting very aggressive. I mean they are all so low. She does have the super mega death rocket but that is not enough. The 1v1 at the end is going to be plenty here. And Rek'Sai looking for more, but simply not low enough at this point. As Sejuani defends that top turret valiantly here against that pony. So low are these members. I mean, Jinx might do a Hail Mary ultimate here, but... So far ahead already. No, here does come the ultimate, but unfortunately, it's not going to be getting there in time. Right after the beast. So unfortunate. Wow, very close there. Uh, if only she had thrown that out just a second sooner, as soon as she had respawned. Perhaps it would have made it there, but... <coughs> at the end of the day, when you're already... Uh, what well, really is a 3-in-1 jinx here, of course, that execution. A black... <laughs> a black mark on her score right now. Uh, but when you're already this far ahead uh, as Jinx here, uh, you don't really need those extra long range Hail Marys to be relevant. You're already going to be accelerated into that late game quicker uh, than normal, and that's all you really need as a Jinx. Just that little extra tip of acceleration just to get you there a little quicker. All you need, and you'll be fine. Um, we actually see the Jinx. Uh, opting to go for a Bloodthirster first. A little bit more defensive uh, of a build choice rather than going for that straight Infinity Edge for the uh, crit damage. If there's going to be any long uh, sieges that come out though, any protracted sieges, that's definitely going to be helpful uh, as that lifesteal will give her a little bit more of natural sustain here. So She'll be able to hang out well on those turrets, make sure she peels through those Janus shields. 
and the flame chomper is gonna be used there to disengage. Successfully so. As the siege continues in the top lane as well, Pony looking to try and create as much damage onto that uh, top lane for the fight. Colonel being there, but there's the ultimate from Sajwani chasing that Jinx hard. And there's the Sivir, gonna be enough to get him. The Flame Chompers do land on two though, so that should be the rest of them getting out alive. And that is a free kill going over to this Facebook team on the red side here. There's Sajwani jumping in. Oh, Morgana so desperately out of position right there. Beautiful flash though, Silent J looking to make it out alive, but there's the return flash from Sivir. Gonna make sure that uh, she doesn't miss that out. The opportunity, of course, capitalized on there. As the pony looking to create a little bit of damage here and there onto that trundle. None of these two are going to worry too much about that trundle, actually, with that Vampiric Scepter. Uh, going to be able to sustain a little bit more as well, working his way up to that Blade of the Ruined King. We see the second dragon of the, day, of the game going to be going over to the blue side. Actually, looking to counter jungle this blue uh, from the red side's jungle here. Zagram, hey, no mind to that trundle, letting him wail away. Knows that he doesn't have Bork, has essentially no damage right now, just a little bit of uh, life skill. And there's the ultimate. Good, good flash out of range, very close there. There's the return ultimate, and that's gonna be enough. The return ultimate from Trundle is enough to keep him alive. Beautiful play there. Just barely keeps them going. He's Morganic, he's so on point. So much damage coming through. Says Sajwani barely making it out with her life intact. He's going to be checking for that red buff see if it's not there. Going to be content with a bit of a deep ward thrown down there. You see, just looking at the CS differentials right now. Looking at the top lane, of course, Zig's always out farming to be expected here. Um, though that is a bit larger of a disparity than normal. Certainly nothing too unusual here. They're actually looking to contest this red buff right now. So Ronnie gonna look for the smite here. She does get in, she does hop away, but Sour Spinach is so low right now. Single R auto attack! There it comes from Ziggs! He does get the kill. On to Karma. Yeah, again, looking at the CS differential, there is a minor differential in the bottom lane here, but gonna immediately pop that ultimate. Does Sivir. Kind of thinking uh, Jinx went a little bit more of an aggressive route there. Actually went far more defensively. Or excuse me, uh, reverse that. Went far more aggressively there. So the flash from John not gonna be enough to follow that up and force the kill onto Jinx. I'm actually looking to turn here. Let's dive in. There's a lot of minion aggro here. He does have the support of Rek'Sai. Beautiful ultimate there into the fear. No Rek'Sai needed. 1v1 solo killed. Dead before even the uh, Cinderhole can get the assist credit for that Rek'Sai. So much damage from the pony. Now of course, with that home guard teleport available, there's going to be a lot of potential gank uh, global ganking coming from that pony as the Trinity Force is looking to be completed here soon. I'm going to defend those wards, force that right side away.
Because again, looking at the item builds for just a moment while we have a lull in the action, uh, Akram more than double almost the CS, actually more than double, completely more than double uh, the CS of Trundle as, uh, as an out rotation here, a bit of an out rotation happens, a lot of damage onto those inner turrets right now, the actual mid lane inner turret going down, uncontested there, good rotations, uh, so if you want to get back right in, uh, going to be able to find that Rex that does smite the camp away. Uh, this isn't necessarily a fight that Sejuani wants. That Q can be putting it work there. There's an ultimate from Morgana now. Going to be enough. Zig's so low right now. Zig's going to be going down. Zig's going to be able to make it out with her life intact. As Morgana continues to be a pest throwing out those Qs. Very on point cues. I'm very impressed with the accuracy from uh, Silent J's Morgana here. And right as I say that though, thawed out a bit, sending it a little bit too far forward, and pays the price with his life. Dragging up in one minute. There's the speed up from Karma. Trying to collapse onto this Jinx. Unfortunately for her, that such one is not going to let her go anyway. Jinx not content to uh, simply try and bust her fight. It's going to go down almost solo to that Sejuani. Heck, I'm going to speed away knowing that's no longer safe in the top lane. You know, you see uh, Jinx actually does end up completing that Infinity Edge first. Uh, does not opt to go with the Bloodthirster first. Goes for a more traditional build, but did get the Vampiric Scepter early, uh, since she did go back with and just get that long sword. She wanted to upgrade that for a little extra life steal, get a little bit more efficiency out of that gold she was forced to uh, spend early on due to the execution there. So Juani getting some good damage on the Silent J, but uh, in the meantime, that top lane current going down from Hecarim, and that's a lot of damage from the Super Mega Death Rocket. So as long as he face planting into the wall there. Uh, and the hero minions trying to follow this up, make something happen. But I'm not mommy gonna be making out uh, just fine, but that's all five members occupied as Hecarim with Trinity Force able to spam that Q, get those Sheen procs out, gets an uncontested top turret. Now, I don't know if he should have been staying this long for that inhibitor, but it may be worth it as he gets the kill. On the Janna, the crits coming out from the Trinity Force. Not going to be enough. Should have just all in that Karma as well. Uh, but that will be uh, the distraction again. Beautiful rotations from this Microsoft One team. Picking up that inner turret on the bottom lane as well. And the Dragon on their way out for their troubles here. Absolutely fantastic play. I am so impressed by uh, this team's coordination here. Despite the score, uh, and as far as kills are concerned, being even 9 to 9 right now, the 7 to 1 in turrets, 3 and 0 to dragons, that tells it all. The gold lead, 7k right now. And this has just been for uh, a result of pure out rotations from this Microsoft One team. You see Ziggs picking on up that red buff, doing a little bit of counter juggling for himself there. As Rex again, scoot right on past these three members, but uh, might might be thinking better of that a little too late here. As the flame chompers do catch two, but that says one the ultimate means Rex is gonna go nowhere. No, Rex makes it out alive. The flash from Karma gonna try to follow it up. No, actually. Now there's a shield from Karma, I'm gonna follow it up to make sure that nothing goes down. And that is the kill on a Jinx, beautiful ultimate from uh, Gianna there, to fully misposition that Jinx. And I cannot believe that Sejuani made it out alive there. Never if you will all indulge me for just a moment, I do want to go back and watch the full extent of that team fight. 
at the bottom here. You see Sejuani taking up a bit of the turrets here. Uh, does take a lot of damage, uh, mostly from that Jinx with that Q turned on here. As Rek'Sai gets out alive, going over there, getting out with under uh, about 100 hit points here. But Sejuani so low as well. And gosh darn it, I was so enamored by that Rek'Sai, I did miss the Sejuani game. We're going to watch that one last time, I do promise here. It's just the Jinx Rockets and the ultimate from Jinx. That's what it was, the burn from that red buff on the uh, Rockets and the ultimate there. Doing so much work, Sejuani and Rek'Sai both so close to dying. But in the end, uh, it was a 4v2, so those numbers eventually coming into play here, and meaning that Jinx does go down. And now that is a 7-0-0 Sivir. Absolutely nightmarish. With that Infinity Edge Static Shiv completed, and I'm sure sitting on a ton of gold as well. Yeah, nearly a whole another BF sword, ready to be purchased outright. So he's looking to get some poke down. Does land a couple Qs here and there. Looking to be as much of a pest as possible here. Uh, so Juan, he wants to take this fight here against Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai just looking to counter drum a little bit of that CS away more so than anything here. Does not have that smite available. So Juan, he just going to back away and get that up. Not worth it contesting with three members there up. Of course, so uh, gonna back back away there safely. So we now see that death cap being completed for Ziggs. Gonna be looking to start putting out a lot of damage here. A poke, no longer gonna be cute little Ziggs poke, but gonna be that crazy mad scientist Ziggs poke. <laughs> As we see, Jinx still sitting on that Avarice blade. Having that just sit there for as long as possible, build up as much pull as she can to extend that lead, get her accelerated further and further into that late game. Of course, is behind that Sivir, who does have that Avarice Blade already upgraded into the Shiv. Good John. Caught just on the edge of that pool there. On that soil, rather. The hacker and actually largely ignoring this trundle. I'm not sure if that's the right decision here, especially with says wanting tell. Good ultimate from says wanting casting hacker right before he can ultimate away here. Uh, was actually probably just going for more damage on a trundle with the tunnel vision there with trundle's ultimate and that blade of the ruin king uh, popped. I I gotta question the decision there to actually stand and fight. I mean, obviously, you know, pony has a special place in my heart, but. I, I don't know if that was the right decision, if that was a little bit overconfident there. So Trundle trying to throw down a slow there. There is the speed up from Karma and the ultimate from Sivir. Gonna be a lot of fighting going down here as Rek'Sai goes into the middle of it. Beautiful Ziggs ultimate does land on three. They are quite low now. Morgana goes golden to survive. But that is a lot of damage coming out from Ziggs. Morgana's auto is going to be enough there. She does go down to the end, but Ziggs hanging out with that consistent damage. But here's the teleport Hecarim, and there goes the rest of this team here. That Jonah going to go down to the Prey Seeker, and that is a 2 for 5. The ace coming in in favor of this Microsoft One team. And the Pony... Gonna be looking to go straight to that inhibitor. As we see Rek'Sai and Ziggs working that bottom lane as well. Rocking that sheen as much as he uh, can here. Gonna be able to get away there. Actually questioning whether or not Sejuani should have run straight to the bottom lane instead of that top. Seems like he was not able, she was not able to get tested. She will. Uh, put some harassment on the right side, but with that tunnel network already built up, she should be able to make it out alive here. The satchel charge available, I believe, not even going to be necessary. Rek'Sai and uh, Ziggs do secure that bottom lane inhibitor. And wow, with 
super minions careening in on either side of the base now for this red side. Caught up by the black pool and the Q binding there. And Jinx runs right face first into the entire bottom lane and gets destroyed. Not adequate ward coverage in that part of the map, I believe, for this blue side. Uh, actually, there, was, there is a lot of vision thrown down. I'm surprised Jinx didn't see that coming a bit. Uh, there are a lot of super uh, minions here. That should be enough damage with the ultimate. And that is Hecker. I'm going to take that down. The Zib ultimate does miss here. So a lot of this of damage. Morgana going gold, but she will go down to the dragon. Wow, BM dragon <laughs> helping out for the red side team here. Uh, the Zig bomb does go a little wide here. The red side going to be able to uh, take this uh, heal off of the red buff and be just fine. As the dragon still looking to fight. But Akram, in the meantime, split pushing away, does get that turret. One of the Nexus turrets down. And again, with Super Minions streaming in from both sides of the base. This is a very tenuous stance here. Being done by the Facebook team. Whenever they leave their base, their base is so vulnerable now. Only a single turret available to guard that Nexus. This is going to be the fourth dragon in the game going down. And you know, it was right of Facebook to come out, try and contest this to prevent the threat of a Dragon 5. And try and get their first dragon in the game to get their uh, bonus uh, damage that they certainly can use at this stage of the game. But unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. And now they are in a position where. That Dragon 5 can come about at any moment here. There is the Sap on the Sejuani, of course. The Morganic Q did not land. The Binding has one more opportunity here. No, the Zap does land, though. And the turn there from Sejuani and Sejuani alone going to be flashed away from by Jinx. And the 1v1, actually, by Hecarone with that Ignite as well, going to be plenty to finish him off. And now they're looking for a collapse onto the Pony, but the Pony has minions with him, he's able to be backed up here, they gotta just defend this uh, Nexus turret here, with all the super minions again streaming in from both the top and bottom lane, there's just so much pressure on this Facebook team, they've stayed uh, surprisingly even for the amount of pressure they've been under, but I, I just don't think they can cope with it at this point, it's simply too much, good spell shield there, but that will be, no actually no one going down just yet here, Baller Baller does sidestep and that's a mutual kill on the 80 carries. Jonna doing her best to get in there, trying to stop the Morgana. Does go golden. That's Ruxai wailing away on the Nexus in the meantime though. They are defending them off, but no! Ruxai and Ziggs left alone too long to uh, attack that Nexus and that will be the game going over to Microsoft 1 in game 1 of this best of 3 series here. A very strong performance put on by this Microsoft team here. Uh, you know, looking at these scores uh, in the sort of recap here, 7-3-2 and two on that uh, Hecarim showed up very strong there for his team. Of course, Rek'Sai 2-0-5, perfect Rek'Sai game, unstoppable throughout. Uh, and looking over to the red side, uh, it was certainly not that there was no uh, performance on this red side at all. 11-2-2 Sivir. 0-2-14 Janna. That bottom lane was so exquisite. I would be very uh, surprised to see that Sivir Janna lane get through again. Uh, they were able to perform so heavily on it. Though again, this is why that Hecarim was first picked away by this Microsoft One team here. Uh, so we'll see if those uh, pick bands get swapped up in game two here. We are going to be uh, going into that right now. So thank you for watching this first game uh, in this best of three series. You can, of course, stay tuned to AfterHoursGaming.tv for all the latest information on the standings, all the videos being uploaded there. And it will, of course, be uploaded to my YouTube channel as well. So feel free to uh, subscribe to there to stay in touch with all the games coming up. And, of course, for the live streamers, do stay tuned. We will be getting into the ga this game two right now. So thank you for watching. I, I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day uh, for those of you watching on the archives.